Welcome to Five Star Weekly. The struggle to score continues, but are we as dire as the scoreline suggests? Getting all that more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Star Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Chris. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. Five fam, we've started a Patreon. Join us there for some fun tiers. Patreon.com slash ATLUCDFanTV. Also get a shout out on Instagram when you join the Kings of South tier. So join us again at Patreon.com slash ATLUCDFanTV. But guys, let's get into the review, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, nil-nil draw against the New York Red Bulls. Uh, not really too uh, surprising, I would say, because it is one of those teams that we struggle with. We don't usually play them that well, and uh, yeah, we had our chances in this match, but yeah, we really didn't put them away. Uh, I, I think it's maybe slightly encouraging that we had some chances, but... At the end of the day, it's a nil-nil draw in front of the fans. Uh, sends them home. Uh, yeah, just kind of a little drab and not really in the best of moods. But uh, yeah, I think some could say that it's uh, a little unlucky, but a little uninspiring. What, what would you think, Chris? Uh, yeah, I would say I, I would, in the spectrum of both of those, um, unlucky and uninspiring, I would say it lent a little bit more to the unlucky for in the second half at the very least uninspiring throughout the whole first but um yeah there were there were chances and we we had a lot of great chances in the last 15 minutes i say great that's that's <laughs> that's respected to what we have been dealing with but we had a lot of chances and half chances to actually put one in the net um specifically uh you know in the um in, in the last the dying stages where we hit the boat so yeah, I would have liked to have seen my prediction come true, the one 0 win, but it's it is it is what it is. And I'm I'm actually it sounds weird, but I'm actually slightly more encouraged by the way that United did start changing the way they were playing. Not necessarily what they were doing with it, but how they changed the way they were playing um in the last fifteen minutes. Yeah, because definitely there were some adjustments uh when Abara had to come off due to a hamstring injury. Well, uh, Alan Franco did come on and, yeah, it changed the shape. Obviously, it was a three-man back line. Uh, possibly something that we see going forward. Who knows? Uh, because Abara with a hamstring, probably, you would surmise, probably is going to be out for a little bit of time. Uh, and, yeah, midfield's a little light. Uh, Marcelino Moreno essentially had to play alongside Santiago Sosa. We got pushed up a little further. And, uh, yeah, it was it looked a little encouraging, I think, Uh in that, you know, Sosa getting involved in the play a little bit more uh, kind of makes it a lot, you know, we, we tick a lot more. We, he finds the right passes. It's maybe something that we've been needing to do. Uh, and, you know, is the yes. three-man back line something that, you know, uh, is something that you want to see going forward? I would I would like for something to be different and moving Sosa up is is number one on my list. Um, we've been missing that that um, that calming and uh, constructive presence in the midfield um, since since Darlington Nagby left. And you know, Sosa is not Nagby, but he has a lot of qualities I think were there um, before uh, you know before we lost Nagby. And so when when Abara went out, it's not great having him and and Heidman out, um, likely long term. But getting a chance, uh, an enforced chance, because I don't think I don't think, think uh, <laughs> I don't think the manager was going to push uh, Sosa up if he didn't have to. Mm-hmm. So kind of getting Sosa pushed up was 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 a really it was a nice outcome for us, I think, in the in what was otherwise a, a not great. Um, thing and uh, having another midfielder injured. So um, right. yeah, I think the three man backline is is basically the de facto way that we have to move forward with how light we are in midfield at this point. Yeah. So one of the players can maybe step forward, and uh, especially if we're in possession, uh, or you know, as that extra man, if there's you know maybe a winger that's uh, you know pulling and stretching our defense a little bit, they can go out and 
Bark Thumb. Uh, yeah, Kubo Torres, yeah, uh, you know, didn't didn't score his chances, but he did, I think, offer a lot uh, in the holdup play. But, I mean, at the end of the day, your striker needs to put away the you know ball in the back of the yes. net. And uh, that's where we've been lacking. Uh, yeah, what, what did you see of uh, Kubo in this match, and did you like it? I like his positioning. I, I actually like his positioning a lot. Um, the issue that he had with, with, with Kubo is that he just isn't putting the ball across the line. He's not putting it into the back of the net. He's not even putting it on frame most of the time. So, um, you know, while he gets in these great positions and he attacks the ball in the air pretty well, it, I don't know what it is. It, it's like if you if you could just... if Maybe the game is going too fast for him and maybe he's just hit that point his career where the game's just going a little too fast for him um and if it were if we were able to slow down maybe he would finish one or two of these uh chances that he gets a game um but i i i do like his positioning and i think it does at the very least um you know put something in the heads of the defenders that they have to watch where he is because you can't bet on him missing always i mean he's 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 not scoring right now, but you can't bet on a striker like, you know, Kubo Torres not scoring, so. Uh, hopefully that's the case. Uh, I'm not sure that I would be betting on those odds myself, but uh, basically, I mean, um, yeah, he he at best is a third uh, string striker, I think, in that sense. Um, you know, and so us having to rely on him right now speaks on the depth unfortunately that's the problem you know and yeah. uh you know i think if lisandro lopez uh if things went another way uh i think him deputizing it'd be a, a little bit more encouraging probably but uh as you know he's got european pedigree he's got uh you know champions league uh experience as well he's a guy that uh i think would have imparted wisdom into this team uh there is a little bit of a lack of maybe leaders on the pitch as well. Again, um, there's, you know, just a lot of guys that are getting acclimated to each other. And yeah, you can use that excuse, but, you know, basically they're not clicking and it's clear. Um, and you need someone to step up. Seems to, like we haven't clicked for, yeah. it seems like we haven't clicked for like the better part of two years now. So it's, That's you have too. to wonder when that clicking is going to come. So it, it, it just, and that's, that's been the most disheartening thing is that, you know, even if we weren't playing well, um, under Tata, uh, there were still glimpses. It, it, it was more of a, it's just not our day rather than we just can't get this thing right. Yeah. And right now it's more like, we just can't get this thing right. And so I, that's the discouraging part for me. And, you know, uh, on the, on the Kubo thing. Yeah. Perfect striker to get a run out, um, you know, in the last few minutes of the game, you know, maybe if there's, you know, maybe there's a chance where you're making extra striker, but yes, as the, as the only front, as the front man, it's not, that's where we are running to the issue. We don't want to have to rely on his goals. We just would like to say, okay, throw him out there. Maybe he'll have a chance to score rather than we need Kubo to actually score. Yeah. Cause win, uh, yeah, basically. obviously yeah. Joseph away on international duty and then not really being able to play. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, nothing was really helped here, uh, while this, uh, happened. Mm. And, uh, it, yeah, I think rightly so leaves a lot of people frustrated. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, also, yeah, when Barco and Moreno were kind of moved more centrally, uh, yeah, it kind of did offer a little bit more of, um, you know, I think a little bit of solidity in a way where we were able to create some more chances. I think, Players were closer together, um, and that's the thing. They often, yeah, Moreno and Barco end up in similar spaces. I, a lot of fans have a lot of questions about this. Uh, that you know, maybe they're too similar. Also, I mean, Ezeko Barco and Piti Martinez that didn't have clear uh, chemistry as well either. They often ended up in similar positions as well. Um, we're just not taking up. Like smart spaces. Go for it. Yeah, there's a common denominator in that. Um, and I, yes. I, not to call out Barco, but it's it's clear now that we don't know who Barco. What we don't know what what the best player to put next to Barco is. 
Um, that is the biggest problem I think that we have because you mentioned that we are creating more trans when they're playing more centrally, but from, I think only one chance came from either of those two individuals, yeah. Moreno or Barco. Um, they did central. Most of it though came from the the flanks, um, Lennon or Moreni. When Moreni came on, that's when a lot of the a lot of the um, endeavor started happening. Um, B two guys on the left. Moreno, I mean, yeah, you uh, you can put in an yeah. early cross because he's left footed. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just it, it just it just worked out better that way. And and the fact that neither Barco nor Moreno are really shooters, I would say. You know, both have scored goals from outside the box, but neither really looks up and like, oh man, I need to I need to have a pop. Neither one does that. And of course they all and, and, and with Barco in particular, um the thing that we've seen, you know, a lot of times is that he is holding on to the ball too long and he draws fouls really well but it's not uh, we're not scoring from free kicks right now we don't have kevin kratz you know to exactly be the, the hack to that he be was money and put it in <laughs> uh you know on a dime every single time yeah no exactly mm. uh it, it's too passive slash holds on to the ball too long not releasing the ball quick enough um i think another feature of this game was uh the incessant fouling that uh, the Red Bulls were doing as well. Um, do you need to have some thoughts yeah. on it? Go ahead, man. Yeah. I, yeah sorry, I, I just think I, I remember I, I I tweeted out that you know it was I think around the 70th minute, and I was like they they have to be at like 20 fouls by now. Yeah. Um, and it's a persistent fouling, and it's and it doesn't seem like a lot when the foul actually happens, but it happens so frequently and. And so much that it's it's a problem, and it and puts us off. And that's what New York has done a lot to us in the past too. And that's what's annoying about it. It's like you you ha you know what's going to happen, and yet you know the ref, even though he didn't call a poor game, um, you know he also let a lot of the persistent infringements go by. Right. Which it's if you've watched the Atlanta United matches, and you know that that persistent fouling. It's going to throw us off our game. It slows us down when we're already playing slowly. So it's it disrupts our refreshing. flow exactly, and that's uh that's that main main bit. Um, another another thing I think of note in this match is when Alan Franco come, came on. Well, uh, yeah, he almost gave the way gave the ball away by dwelling on it a little too long, and uh, you know I think there's more and more louder shouts for how is this guy our DP? I mean, yes. The game maybe is a little fast for you, uh, you know, when you first come in, uh, haven't, you know, played full 90s maybe in a minute. Uh, I can understand that, but it is one of those things like, um, you know, you want the players to be ready. They come in and uh, yeah, he almost uh, pretty much, um, you know, gave them the lead. And uh, it, by some miracle... Uh, yeah, Goose was definitely standing on his head on this match. Uh, yeah, did a lot of good work. Uh, got the man of the match for good reason, I think. Uh, I believe he did anyway. But um, And then I think, yeah, some shout-outs need to also go to George Bellow, who uh, is one of the players that is taking the game by the scruff of the neck and was trying to kind of win this game uh, by himself a little bit at times. Um, he moved centrally like uh, Ainsley has wanted him to do. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like, um, uh, you know, some of our best chances came through moves from him, but yeah, it's just one of those things where, you know, uh, no, we couldn't buy a goal in this match, really. Like, Arthur Blank could write a blank check, and we still couldn't score. So, it's just one of those, uh, <laughs> yeah, you chalk it up a little bit. for a goal at this point. Yes. Like, what, what's a goal worth right now? Uh, probably a DP. We should probably bring in a DP that can score. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> um, so let's wrap this baby up because, yeah, there's not really, I think, much more that can be said about it unless you have some, uh, final parting thoughts on this, Chris. Uh, I think this will be the closest, aside from the, the playoff uh, fixture between us, um, I think this is the closest we've been to beating the Red Bulls in the regular season. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there was that match that I think Greg Garza got injured that I think we were leading 
But then after you got injured, you just kind of went straight downhill. Uh, I think that that comes to mind as well as one of those matches that might be two or three. Yeah. Eh. But either way, uh, let's wrap it up. And next up, Atlanta United will be playing Chicago Fire on Saturday. And we'll have that preview later on in this episode. But let's get into the news. And first up is, uh, yes, Abara, Rockway Barra has a hamstring injury. So usually those are at least three weeks. So he's going to be out for a while. Probably taking him a little bit of time to get back. Unfortunate because our depth in midfield is very, very, very low already. I mean, Mo Adams, no doubt, has to feature. Uh, you know, you'll have to think uh, Mateo Sosetu, when he returns from his injury, will definitely feature. And so hopefully he does uh, recover soon. But uh, it's also, yeah, I mean, you know, with this midfield. Uh, is it inspiring at all? I mean, we basically, uh, we have two kind of holding midfielders and, uh, Marcelino Moreno to kind of deputize. And that's really it right now. <laughs> I mean, uh, not, not super, uh, yeah, it's a little disconcerting. It, it brings it, I mean, and you can't, you can't predict injuries, but it is disconcerting though that even before the injuries like it's just that there's just seems like every week there's another question about how has this squad been put together right because like you mentioned two holding midfielders and you know i mean i know what i know what moreno is supposed to be and i know what bargo is supposed to be but it's it is it is hard and with the hamstring for um for a bar i mean hamstrings are persistent and they're nagging yeah and so you don't want to see him come back early so i don't think he'll be back anytime soon to be honest because it's just going to be it's going to be how the player handles it and it's going to be the comfort level because if he's playing scared too he can just easily re-injure it so right i i think that we're going to be light and i think that you know while our main focus has been on the on the attacking front we might have to look to the transfer window for something in the midfield um that just might be something that we end up having to do Right, or maybe calling up some guys from the twos. Either way, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think also this, it's like, Rocco Barra, I think, definitely was our most athletic uh, midfielder, and he wins a lot of balls in the air. We're going to miss a lot, I think, uh, when he's out. But uh, also, Jurgen Dom, uh, he was injured during the warm-ups, and he, uh, with his lower body, uh, no specific injury in terms of, like, body part was named, but he will be week to week, and uh, so, you know, basically just got back, and now, yeah, it's another. And so, uh, it's those kind of frisky uh, hamstring injuries, exactly like you're talking about. But uh, moving on from that, Joseph Martinez and Ronald Hernandez, uh, they're clear to return to training, and so they could feature against the Chicago Fire over the weekend, as uh, unfortunately, Venezuela was knocked out uh, in the group stages in the Copa America tournament. But, uh, yeah, Such a uh, shame. I, for one, am <laughs> psyched that uh, Joseph Martinez is back, unfortunately, for Venezuela. But, uh, yeah, we we I think the maybe like two more clear cut chances Joseph would have put away uh, versus Red Bulls. But uh, oh, for yeah. sure, we we had eight. We, we have eight shots, I think, this game, this match. Um, if if Joseph, if Joseph had taken, you know, they just have taken five of them. One of them would be in the back of the net. Yeah. So Agreed. Agreed. This is how, that's how I feel. One and a half, maybe, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't get to look at our XG, but, uh, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't pretty, but, uh, <laughs> it's just one of those, uh, but anyway, move on, uh, moving on from that, uh, transfer rumor of the week. George Bello was reportedly a target of Galatasaray in Turkey, according to multiple reports. And yeah, the Turkish side is working on a transfer for a left back, uh, either Alex Moreno or Esgen Alioski. But uh, yeah, the uh, top target is apparently Real Betis's Alex Moreno. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those also, they later on, um, they said that they were reportedly looking to acquire one of these players prior to the UCL qualifying match against PSV. That's July 21st through the 28th. That's according to Fanatic.com TR. 
So, yeah, I mean, would this be a good move for Bello and LA United? What do you think? Uh, no, but for for Bello himself, yeah, I mean, going over going over to, um, you know, whether it's the Turkish league or whether it is, you know, Italy, you know, France, any of those any of those leagues over there. Um, you know, in Europe, I think that it's a, a really good opportunity, um, especially for a young, a young player. And, and Bello, has, he's proved himself here in the MLS. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where it, it'd be whether or not he feels that he's come as far as he has, uh, as he can um, with Atlanta United. Um, in terms of whether it'd be good for Atlanta United, no. Um, you know, for the prestige of Atlanta United, yes. For the squad, no. Yeah, no, he's been arguably one of our best performers, and so yeah, uh, I agree. It's um, you know, though so we do have Andrew Gutman, uh, who's on loan at New York Red Bulls, uh, who's injured currently. Obviously, uh, he didn't play against us, but um, yeah, you also have Mikey Ambrose. I mean, it's one of those. Yeah, I don't think you want to like maybe make it, you know, do this move this window, but maybe in the winter window, possibly. Um, you know, and just have him maybe on loan with us until the rest of the season. But maybe we just like kind of calm all that talk and just actually announce it in the winter. But uh, yeah, for for George Bello, it's like yeah, Europe definitely uh, you know it adds that prestige. And Galatasaray is you know as a Champions League side, uh, it's definitely exciting maybe for uh, those prospects. But yeah, um, it, we lose too much I think by doing this move right now. Um, I think that would be essentially waving the white flag, but, um, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's yeah. too early for all that, but, uh, Those sort of transfers are only good if you're confident that you can get that, that if you're confident in your front office to replace them. And so far we have not been, we, we have not been the best at replacing the talent that has left. True. Um, that is, that's where I, it's it's always the thing. It's like, oh yeah, I mean, we can get money for it. We can get this. We can get that. But it's like, well, what are you going to do with it? Because money yeah. doesn't win you matches. So you know, it's not anything. It's not anything that I don't think we should consider. Right. That's and, just me though. I'm not in the front office. Right. And it's also that too. Uh, yeah. Not only are there lots of loud questions about the the front office, but also, I mean, you know, Arthur Blank uh, is not shy to open his checkbook. So not really an issue of like us making any money back or anything of that type of thing it's more for the prestige in that sense but uh speaking of this transfer window though uh doug roberson tweeted that there is one senior roster spot still open and an international spot as well uh no doubt probably because of uh lisandra lopez a little bit in terms of the international slot uh and then also yeah maybe Josetu uh because of his green card but yeah, it offers us a little bit of flexibility, I think, here. Uh, but Hainsey did speak after the match about the transfer window, and he said that, uh, yeah, they already had talks, uh, and the plan has been laid out. Uh, but that's, you know, the maybe the press and the media knows more about the MLS transfer rules than he does. Uh, but the front office has apparently been working diligently to bring in the right players to Atlanta. Um, but he said, quote, we'll see what we can do. The club's working hard to keep or to help this team grow. Done work very well in the past with young players and players who believe, uh, who I believe are doing well now and who have a bright future. Uh, I think, yeah, he's probably talking about Santiago Stosa and maybe Franco Ibarra and you know, players like that, that he's kind of brought in and asked for probably, but uh, yeah, when Hainsey, he was asked about, um, you know, analyzing the team needs, um, he said, yeah, there's also, yeah, there's different rules. We know that the club is giving maximum effort. Let's see who we can get. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, also there's this bit where Darren Eels, he spoke to 92.9. He confirmed those intentions. It's really like, for me, it wasn't really, uh, that telling. But he said, I think we're always looking to improve the squad. It's definitely too early in terms of panicking. But that doesn't mean we're not going to look to improve the squad. We've got another opportunity uh, with the window coming up and the ability to try to make some moves. 
Um, and he said, look, this is a sport. Uh, you can't guarantee, particularly in a game like soccer where the margins are very thin, you're going to get uh, a win every single time. What I can assure our fans is that we're spending everything we can to get it right. We've got another window to make that an opportunity. I'm uh, pretty confident that uh, come the end of the season, we'll be back to where we expect to be in the table. We're never resting on our laurels. Uh, it's great front office speak. Do you believe it? Well, I have to believe it. Um, I do believe that they're not trying to actively um, put our team in a worse position. I do believe that they are trying everything. It's a matter of whether they can. Um, where they truly believe they'll be able to do that because it, let me ask you this do you feel like we are one player away every time i've, I've heard or, or or read or you know uh or say speak or eels or anybody um it doesn't seem like we're, we're looking at players we look like it looks like we're looking at a player do you think we're one player away from being the back to where we we where we would like to be yeah and no that's uh definitely not the case and so yeah for me we at least probably need um you know, someone in midfield that can score. We need a winger that can also score. We need a proper backup at striker. Uh, you know, there's a lot to address, I feel like. Uh, and if George Bellow is sold, then you need to, uh, you know, make those moves accordingly to replace that production. Um, yeah, you might need to be looking at, uh, you know, some sort of uh, player that could replace Guzan, and uh, you know, in the future, I mean, it's like, do you start to bet it, them in, or uh, you know, do you just kind of uh, move on in the off season or some off season? I mean, he's still, I think, doing a really great job in the sense of MLS, but uh, there comes a time, I think, that you know, we might need to look at uh, you know players that are a little younger that can uh, maybe bring a little bit with their more with their feet also uh but anyway that's uh you asked the question that's that's how i feel but <laughs> um anyway so moving on from that uh miggy he unfortunately pulled a hamstring as well and he had to go out of uh, the copa america in tears uh paraguayan reports say that uh miggy he could miss the rest of the tournament after hearing a pop in his left hamstring gutted for miggy uh you know that's Never want to hear that. And uh, Miggy, such a such a stand up dude. And uh, yeah, it's just really sad when uh, you know some of our former players just get injured and they can't uh, you know live out their dreams. In that sense, uh, you know. Also, yeah, BT Martinez, you know, recently uh, tore an ACL. It's just yeah, it's it's uh, it's part of the game. It just really sucks, I think. But um, yeah. Moving on from that, Frank de Boer, he has stepped down as the Netherlands head coach after a shocking defeat uh, against the Czech Republic on Sunday. And so, yeah, you know, uh, Netherlands kind of in turmoil. Very interesting what's going on there. But, uh, yeah, yet another kind of uh, misstep in Frank de Boer's kind of whole thing. And uh, it's, yeah, I don't He's probably gonna get a job at like Tottenham or something like that, or uh, and you know <laughs> somehow still uh, still land some sort of gig that's like, oh, that's how did he do that? <laughs> yeah. He's again, he's not he's not the worst manager, and, he, and he's not he's by far not the not the um the least charismatic either. Um, but you know, in terms of in terms of displaying something that. There's a word. It's called retread. And <laughs> it's yeah. You know, there's there's gonna be somebody who's going to he's going to do a retread. Except he's like the he's like the tier B or C of retread. He's not like a he's not like a Carlo Ancelotti or or um or a, or a Jose Mourinho type of retread. He yeah, is a or Rafa Benitez <laughs> or yeah yeah Sam Allardyce type of retread. No yeah. offense to any of those guys, but um you know he will get another job. And I think the Netherlands and and. Thing, 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 sorry, the thing you're seeing with the Euros, I feel like, is that some of this, this, um, uh, some of the, some of the promised, um, you know, generation of teams, the Dutch, Germans, um, you know, the French, um, you know, uh, Portugal's not really as, as young, but, you know, they're, they're still struggling. Um, and they're struggling for, I think they're struggling a lot of times for ideas and, and creativity. And I think pragmatism is kind of, 
France aside, France, you know, just got knocked out in a thrilling game. But I think that, you know, the pragmatism that was Frank De Boer, um, you know, it, it shows a lot with some of these other teams too that are just trying to be very pragmatic, um, you know, and kind of foregoing, um, you know, a, a little bit more of the creativity for, hey, let's try to try to build a great structure as opposed to building a, um, you know, building a, a forward thinking team. And so I think, uh, as as long as those guys tend to get jobs and stuff, feels they might struggle because of it unless they have a superstar that you know, just changed the game. Right, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those um, in terms of Frank de Boer, um, you know, it's yeah, his tenure here obviously uh, very enigmatic, but um, it is very perplexing why people would maybe look at his style of play and say, yeah, I want to see that, you know, on our team. Like, it's just, um, you know, you have a lot of uh, really talented players and you pretty much put the handbrake on them. It's, yeah, I, I just can't get behind it. But uh, anyway, uh, moving on from that, uh, you know, we'll wrap up the news and get into the match preview. And yes, this Saturday... Seven, wait, what was it? 9 p.m. Oof. Uh, it is against the Chicago <laughs> Fire. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, obviously a holiday weekend. And so, yeah, there will be those uh, very, um, maybe it's not controversial, but uh, basically not loved too much in terms of those uh, training kits as well worn before the match that looked like those uh, New England Revolution logos. But uh, yes. Anyway, uh, the the fire they uh, they did a pretty comprehensive rebuild uh, recently, and they not only have a new owner, uh, new logo that they redid earlier this year. Uh, we'll get your thoughts on if you like that or not, Chris. But uh, new stadium, new front office, new coaching staff, and half of a new quad. Uh, yeah, they uh, basically they didn't make the playoffs, but they were a point behind the playoff line but uh yeah basically uh, a little bit more stability this winter they're trying you know and getting those uh additions to kind of grow into the team uh but it's year two for head coach Raphael wiki and uh yeah it's uh they're they're not a good squad right now and uh we'll just be frank um it's uh yeah they're a team that's uh, a little bit of the doormat, a little bit for MLS, but uh, let's get into their key acquisition. So, Stanislav Ivanov, uh, it's a he's a rising Bulgarian international winger, and he was signed from Levski Sofia this winter. 21 year old, uh, five seasons of professional experience, so really, really good in that respect. Uh, but he will miss half of the first season after undergoing knee surgery. Uh, John Espinoza, he, uh, joined Chicago from Ecuadorian side Sede de Aquas. Uh, and he's a versatile defender who's likely probably to play right back. And, uh, so he lost his Jordi Mihaljevic. Uh, he was their homegrown midfielder who was traded to CF Montreal this winter. Uh, definitely a big miss, I think, in their creative attack. And then CJ Sapong, much traveled CJ Sapong. Uh, yeah, he also departed via free agency this offseason to Nashville. But uh, getting into our uh, pretty much our matchup against them uh, in uh, years past, not been, uh, it's been pretty kind of like a little bit back and forth. But surprisingly, yeah, you know, they haven't really been a good side, but they kind of play us tough. And so, uh, yeah, they've got three wins in this matchup. We've got three wins. We've got eight goals. They've got ten goals. It's uh, yeah, um, you know. But we last played them. You might remember earlier on this season, three-one win uh, on April twenty-fifth. But um, that was our last win, wasn't it? Yeah, that was our last win. It's uh, seems like a long time ago. It was uh, pretty much two months ago. But. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, their last uh, match, they drew 3-3 against the Philly Union. Uh, their last six, uh, it ain't pretty. Basically, four losses, one win, one draw. 
for us, it ain't pretty either. Four draws, one loss, and one win. So, yeah, pictures of inconsistency, both of these teams. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, things to take into account here. But uh, let's get into some of the players to watch. Chris, take it away. Yeah, two things. So, um, Robert Birch, uh, his debut season in Chicago wasn't exactly as advertised. He's more of a plug and play center forward. Um, I'll get you some goals. Um, but uh, he finished second in the Golden Boot race uh, with 12 goals in 23 matches. Um, they have a uh, midfield trio of them, but the midfield uh, duo of acquisitions of um, uh, Gaston Jimenez and Alvaro uh, Madron um, of Argentina and Spain, uh, respectively. Um, Jimenez is a defensive midfielder, and he's a foundational piece um, for Wiki squad, dictates possession, shields the back line. It sounds kind of like a wish list that we have. <laughs> Uh, is a solid number six, um, and you know he is very much you know if if you if you and we've talked about if you want to kind of get into that that playoff conversation, um, a solid number six is kind of where you'd like to start at most times. Um, the drum, um, he's proved to be a fruitful midfielder partner for Jimenez. Um, he's played a bit deeper uh, at times, but um, he does have two goals and six assists uh, in his first season with the Fire. Uh, the last is uh, Ignacio Aliceta. Uh, is a forward in the club's third DP. Um, he was signed, uh, you know, during the previous off season. Um, you know, obviously had you know some issues with consistency. Uh, you know, last year, obviously we were in a pandemic and it was a new country and whatnot, um, new league and all of that. So understandable. Um, he did enjoy a pretty good preseason. So um, you know, it's potential for him going uh, for the rest of 2021 here. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the injuries and availability for Atlanta. Obviously, uh, yeah, we mentioned in the news that uh, Jose Martinez and Ronaldo Hernandez is back. Uh, Jurgen Dom, uh, unfortunately injured. Franco Ibarra injured. He has said to likely also probably uh, questionable, probably, I think, in that regard. So, uh, yeah, very light on midfield. But uh, in terms of uh, Chicago Fire's formation they play with that 4-3-3 uh Barrich up top Ali Seda probably on the left uh and then like we were saying Jimenez and Madron in midfield but uh yeah um you know something to take into account nothing too crazy 4-3-3 I think uh you know like I've said kind of a doormat for the league a little bit so uh we should be running this right no I don't I don't but not on something. <laughs> uh, let's not get too confident just quite yet. But anyway, let's get into our predicted starting at 11. Uh, Guzan, obviously, between the six. But uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you have in terms of formation and, uh, you know, in the defending, uh, in the def- uh, defenders, rather? Yeah, I have a little bit of a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, kind of what we talked about the three at the back, uh, Frank Robinson and Wonks. And I actually think that this would be a good ch- Chance for uh, Franco to get his get his feet out from under him to be able to you know get some some good playing time um, next to what I consider to be our our, our prime center back pairings, um, and so those three I think would be at the back um, a midfield kind of you know kind of a mix and match and, and more or less having you know Leno and Bello um, still kind of provide the width but be more. I think more advanced, um, kind of how they were in the second half of the second half last match. Um, Marino and Sosa as well. I think Sosa is going to be a little bit more um, uh, forward facing, if that makes sense. Um, and Marino, I think, will kind of roam, um, and I think that's where I think that's what he prefers. And and we'll see how that goes. He actually wasn't bad this last match, um, so I, I, I really did. Uh, especially in the first half, he was one of our better players. But, you know, as that game wore on, you know, we kind of saw saw it kind of, you know, stagger a little bit. But, um, and then the three, it, it just, it's time for something a little bit different. I, I don't think that, you know, doing a false nine or putting Kubo up top is, is the false nine for Lopez, I should say, and, and putting Kubo up top is, is the best way forward mm. right now. We just need to try something different. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. For me, 
pretty much the same back line and midfields uh, agreed. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, it's the best chance I think probably for Alan Franco to bet in. I think against the kind of lower division side. Uh, but yeah, I think for me, uh, yeah, with Mulraney and Barco uh, as the wingers, probably uh, Mulraney has I think earns some playing time here for sure. Uh, Eric Lopez could be that energy off the bench that if we needed, you know, maybe. Uh, a goal late or something. Uh, up top, I like Conway or, yeah, I mean, I pref- I would prefer Joseph Martinez, obviously, but uh, yeah, him just coming back maybe lacks the fitness. I can see Kubo maybe going 60 minutes and then Joseph Martinez coming on later. Um, and that would be probably something that uh, Hainsey would do. We'll see. But either way, um, yeah. yeah, let's get into the odds then. Uh, Bet365 says that LA United have a 30.3 chance to win this match, a draw at 28.6, and Chicago Fire have a whopping 47.6 chance to win this game at home. Uh, kind of would make sense, but uh, it's also, yeah, Chicago have failed to win nine of their last 10 matches, so it's like, uh, I think I might go against these odds. Going a little. against the grain at that point. Yeah, <laughs> as well. So, uh, you know, yes, they did score three goals last match, but I think we're a little bit, uh, sometimes more stout, uh, in some respects. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but let's get into the score prediction. What do you got? Uh, I have a 2 1 win for Atlanta United. Okay. I do. Any I reasoning? honestly do have a, a win this time. Okay. I'm sorry. Any reasoning behind it? Well, I just think that it's, you know, it kind of goes back to, you know, why I had us beating the Red Bulls, um, um, you know, in our, in our last, our, uh, our last preview or our last predictions, because I think it's the form thing. I think that, you know, with, with the way that Chicago is playing, I mean, they are, you basically take our draws and, and, and basically have it to where we couldn't hold on any longer and mm-hmm. we would lose. And I think that that's something to where, at the very least, you could say that we at least hung on in most of these, even when we have given up goals. Um, you know, and the momentum has clearly shifted. I think we've held on to to at least get a point. Um, and again, I don't, I don't prefer that, but mm-hmm. it's at least a positive. So I, I do have us somehow getting uh, two goals and probably shipping one late. Uh, maybe having one of those scares pulling out our hair. Um, but somehow we hold on, uh, and I think we, we end up eking this one out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll take two goals. Uh, I don't like the goal conceded, but, uh, I'll take a one nil win. Uh, I have a feeling we probably draw, but, uh, I think <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I think we can eke out a one nil win. Uh, maybe Joseph scores one late for us, uh, coming on. Um, you know, he's kind of done that a little bit, uh, when he's come on against Chicago fire. I think, uh, he's, it's a team that he does like scoring against as well. Uh, so maybe history does, uh, play itself out kind of over and over. It'll be, uh, it'll be a welcome sight. Sure. But anyway, guys, let us know your comment or your score predictions in the comments below, but, uh, that does it for the match preview and gets us to the question of the day the question of the day is is the return of joseph enough versus the fire let us know in the comments below uh you know i think obviously we need a lot more probably in uh kind of the transfer window and uh yeah you know this midfield kind of scares me uh i don't know how we're gonna maybe keep a shut up but you know stranger things have happened so either way let us know in the comments below. But guys, that does it for the episode. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And for Chris, I'm AJ. Thank you so much for watching.